book saying that I basically married the Loch Ness Monster and had 14 goblin babies. It won't matter that it's not true. Uh, they're, I can sue them and even win, but I can't get them on unjust enrichment so they make $100 million and pay me a million and get to basically lie. Well, and they ain't going to pay you even a million. Rest assured on that. They, they just get, because my actual defamation award is only a half a million. And then they gave me 1.3 on unjust enrichment that they, you know, they had made, the estate had made over $6 million just on the book. And the book publisher has made $40 million on the book or more. But how much since the film came out? Oh, well, that ain't part of mine because I wasn't in the film. But they, oh yeah, they made, the film made three or four hundred million. Were they intending to put you in the film? Ah, uh, there's no way to know. Uh, all I know is that had I not gone to court, you can bet I would have been in there. I had to go to court to stop this lie from being in the film because it was interesting during the trial. They were trying to diminish my importance to the book. Now, they obviously felt they were going to lose, but they wanted to diminish the award. So the other attorney said, Mr. Ventura, wouldn't even call me governor. He said, Mr. Ventura, would it, would it surprise you to know that you're not in the original, that the first screenplay has been written and you're not in it? And I looked at him in front of the jury and I said, no, that doesn't surprise me at all. I said, we, my attorneys have, have we're sent on the two march. letters. Stay there. Warner Finish the story. We come back. I'm going to break. Now, I wanted to get Jesse Ventura's take on this because back on August 24th, about a month ago, Joe Biggs filed a detailed report for InfoWars Nightly News uh, detailing the fact that the State Department and Hillary Clinton and others had basically ordered the U.S. military to let uh, the Afghan soldiers and others abuse children. And Joe Biggs uh, filed the report. We're going to play a clip of it in a moment. Uh, and then get Governor Ventura's take on it, and then get a brief take on it uh, from Joe Biggs. But there it is, exclusive. Hillary Clinton sanctioned child rape in Afghanistan. Documents show Clinton's State Department told troops to ignore Afghan pedophilia. And here's the headline in the New York Times yesterday. U.S. soldiers told to ignore sexual abuse of boys by Afghan allies. And, and this goes back to what are we doing funding al-Qaeda and ISIS all over the world? And now it's even come out that our government's funding it. The former head of defense intelligence went public a month ago. The deputy head of the CIA went public two weeks ago on CBS News. I want to ask Governor Ventura, does this mean the military's you know, trying to do the right thing? And this is very exciting. But here's a clip from the report with Joe Biggs last month. Here it is. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now, last week, an article came out in the Daily Mail titled Decorated Green Beret is kicked out of U.S. Army Special Forces after shoving Afghan police commander who raped boy who was 12 years old and then beat up his mother when she reported the crime to higher ups. And now you have a decorated soldier who was with the U.S. Army Special Forces for 11 years. He is now being kicked out after he stood up for a young rape victim and his mother who were beaten by this rogue police commander. Now, word got out to Sergeant First Class Martland that one of the police commanders that he had trained had sexually assaulted a boy and hit his mother. All right, and that's good. Decided to take and then Joe goes into his military contact saying, yes, this is going on. Yes, this is happening. That's the exclusive portion of it. They have the U.S. Army wearing high heels and sensitivity training now. Uh, they're making it this, you know, this huge political war zone. We never hear that the West is what gave us all these inclusive freedoms, our forebearers. But then Europe, German women are told, wear long skirts. It'll upset the, quote, migrants. So I wanted to get Jesse Ventura's take on this. Uh, I mean, I know you're a libertarian at heart. I, I guess I'm speaking for you, or you can tell me what you would classify yourself as, uh, Governor Ventura. But what do you make of the millions of refugees? I mean, I know the West destabilized it, but Saudi Arabia won't take one person. These other countries won't take one. We've got floods of these uh, refugees coming in, and then a lot of them are radicalized former ISIS fighters, and the left is telling us we've got to adopt their culture, whether it be uh, the radical elements of it, raping women, pedophilia. Uh, what is your view on the situation? Well, my view on the situation is we would never be in any of this if we hadn't have responded like we did to 9-11 by invading Iraq. Uh, we destabilized the entire region. Uh, you now don't know who runs anything over there. It's 10 times worse than it's ever been. Uh, 
And ultimately, we have to look in the mirror and bear some responsibility for it because we went over there and started the Iraq war. And this is the end result to the majority of that, even though it also deals, look at Afghanistan. When the Taliban had Afghanistan, the world's heroin had ground to a halt. When we went in there, we sided with the poppy growers and the heroin went back into the banks and the laundered money went back in the international banks and it, uh, you know, stopped that first 2003 little recession that we had. So, again, I don't know what to do, Alex. This is all the end result of war. Whenever you have war, people think it's a glorious thing and it's a wonderful thing, uh, you know, to be victorious at war. But they don't look at, at the, the kickback and the results. The majority of people that die in wars are civilians, not military. That's a known fact. And what is the end result? Now you've got all these people with nowhere to go because you've got total unrest over there. Where are they all going to go now? You know, and the wars continue on. So you're going to continue with more and more of this. And this is the blowback from it. And people need to understand that before they decide to commit to war, that there will be a blowback when the war is over. There will be repercussions that even at war, when you win, you ultimately may lose. Follow me? They have a term for that. In fact, if Buckley can come in here, he was telling me about the term the other day about a war you win, but from the collateral damage, you end up losing down the Road. There's a particular known term for that we can pull up, but absolutely, Governor, you're right. But if we go back to the PNAC document, Rebuilding America's Defenses, that I know you covered on your television program, uh, Conspiracy Theory, where they admit the plan was to destabilize the Middle East, make it more radical, and then have a new coming super war with the radical jihadis. And now we see that, but now we see the former head of defense intelligence and the deputy head of the CIA coming out and admitting our government funded al-Qaeda and, and then changed the name to uh, ISIS. So I think that's very positive that we have Congress people talking about the 28 pages and more. Aren't you and I and other 9-11 truthers that have been so demonized, aren't we vindicated now? I believe we are. I believe those 28 redacted pages, if they make them public, has vindicated us because that shows that it was not what they told us. If these guys were financed by the upper echelon House of Saud in Saudi Arabia, then were they even operatives of Al-Qaeda? Were they even operatives of the Taliban? How, who knows? I mean, we're changing opponents over there every six months. One week we're with these guys, the next week we're with these guys, and it's just a big chess game going on over there that as an individual taxpayer you have no idea from one week to the next what exactly is going on over there and that's why i Rand paul and bernie sanders are the only three i know who are saying get the hell out of there completely well i totally agree with you on that front all i know is i saw farmer's market it looked really nice in omaha nebraska i went there for an hour my suitcase wasn't that full, so I got some stuff from my mom, some grape jelly, some grapes, some bell peppers. I put it in my bag. I didn't think, oh, I can't take grape jelly. And they kept asking me for like 35 minutes, why'd you try to sneak this through? We're going to search you again. They just tore everything apart. Tested, they tested it for bombs, opened up the can of jelly, and they, they were so upset. And it was like mental illness. It was like Twilight Zone. I said, it's grape jelly. You know it's grape jelly. They take women's pumped milk. Uh, they take, you know, little things of perfume away. And, I mean, they thought I was trying to sneak it through. Now, I thought I lived in a free country where I could stick a thing of jelly for my mother in a bag. And it's just, I want my country back. You haven't flown in years. And it's just ridiculous that well, they're funding al-Qaeda. Al Sorry, go ahead. Alex, I did the best I could. I tried to go to federal court and I spent 20000 of my own dollars to try to go against Homeland Security and 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 uh, the TSA. And as I said, it got thrown out of court. The federal judge said that she didn't have jurisdiction. And I sued under the Fourth Amendment. So what are you to do? Nothing. They, 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 they're immune. 
And that's the way the Democrats and Republicans have set our government up to be today, to be immune. When, when they decide to implement a policy, whether that policy follows the Constitution or the Bill of Rights or not, is irrelevant to them. And I know I'm beating the dead horse, but I'm going to keep telling people, as long as you keep electing Democrats and Republicans, this is what you are going to get. Well, I agree with you. I want to go to phone calls. Joe Biggs, we were talking about his pieces in here now. Uh, you heard the governor talk about the narcotics went from you know 10% of world production to 130% of world production. They didn't just be, you know, become 90%. They... They then topped it you know, 13 times. Uh, that's the Associated Press own numbers. You were over there in Afghanistan, almost died there repeatedly. You're also in Iraq. Uh, you know, what do you think of Ventura's perspective on this? I mean, he's completely and totally correct about the, uh, the opium because <clears throat> I myself, my unit was sent out to actually guard opium field sometimes and then sometime ordered to take them down depending on if these guys would play ball with us or not. So that's definitely going on. And then the fact that the State Department's gonna come out and release information to the Department of the Army telling them, hey, don't stop the pedophilia. That is a cultural issue. That's not a cultural issue. That's a humanitarian issue. That's child abuse. That's rape. Why are we going over? We're supposed to go to Afghanistan to help them. Instead, we've produced way more opium ever. And now we're allowing, we're not even that, we're telling soldiers, Marines, airmen, to not even go in and stop it. And that just shows you what they're gonna do. The fact that they fired this Sergeant First Class who's an operator in the Special Forces, hey, you're out of here because you stopped, you're trying to stop pedophilia. That's the message they're, they're, they're putting out. That's ridiculous. Well, I mean, political correctness has gone so far where we have to adopt everybody else's culture. Uh, Alex, yeah. how about John Caracu, the CIA guy that refused to torture and he exposed the torture and had to go to jail for three years. I remember that. In fact, he the just only got guy out. The mm -hmm. go to jail over torture was the guy who exposed it. It's the exact same story. Or all these reporters. Uh, I mean, I know you didn't like Obama. You're nonpartisan, but they admit even liberal professors. He's prosecuted triple the number uh, of reporters than any other president before him. Well, that's what Michael Hastings was said. He said there was a complete and total war on journalism a war on journalists ever since the Obama administration had taken charge, that he was basically hushed and told what to do and what not to do. He was kicked off of Air Force One because he was telling the truth about stuff. They didn't like that. And then his car blew up. I want to go to phone calls for Jesse Ventura. Do you have any other questions or comments, Joe? Uh, negative. That's it. Thanks. All right. Great job with your report. Thank you so much. There goes Joe Biggs. He'll be, of course, filing reports for InfoWars Nightly News coming up this evening. Jesse, I want to go to Mike, Kevin, Ronnie, Bill, Jeff, and others. But before we go any further, uh, one of my f favorite books that you've written, and I've, and I've read almost all the books you've written, at least the modern ones, uh, because they have so much info. I even learn stuff from them. I also love how each subject has a chapter. But my favorite book you've written, uh, American Conspiracies, that's going to be coming back into print. It was a bestseller, and it's going to be updated, correct? Yeah, we, uh, Dick Russell and I, through our pub publisher at Skyhorse, uh, Tony Lyons wanted to do it. You know, you can write a new chapter, Alex, almost every year because the government's going to do something on a yearly basis that, that'll fit into the book. So we did chapters, one very close to my heart, on POWs and MIAs, and it shows that uh, how young people are misled in the military to believe you're told if you get captured, we will do anything and everything to get you home. Well, we show in the book how that's simply not true. If you become a political liability, you're gone, young man or woman. There ain't no U.S. government that's going to come to get you. And the case in point is Captain Scott Spiker. The, the, he was a flyer during the first Bush Gulf War. He was declared dead the first day by then Secretary of Defense Dick Cheney, who never served in the military. It turned out it was not true. Cheney put a fact out that was false. He was, he was, he was over there for over 12 years, eventually captured by Saddam Hussein, who used him as a bargaining chip. But when we invaded, he then lost his value and Saddam killed him. Well, you're certainly right about that. And it's just crazy what we've been taught to put up with. 
I mean, I see a lot of folks waking up, but it's kind of a paradox. They're waking up and then just saying, what do you do about it? In your gut, Jesse, where do you see this country and the rest of the world going? I mean, look at the Russians are moving a base into Syria to fight against ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Our own government's secretly backing them. That's come out. Uh, we've got the Saudi royal family by the UN being appointed to